This podcast has allowed me to connect with people all over the world. It has also given me the opportunity to reconnect with past classmates. Today's guest graduated a year ahead of me at Northport and will share her experience with postpartum to help those who may be experiencing it too. But before I bring her on, let's learn how she podcasts. Maddie, how do you stream your podcast? Is it through Spotify, Apple? So I primarily do Spotify, but I also dabble with Apple for sure. But I'd say Spotify. Great. Now, when do you normally listen to your podcast throughout the day? So as a mom, I'm just going to try to squeeze it in wherever I can, whether it be a nap time, um, any sort of quiet time or opportunity to rest, as we call it. in our family. <laughs> yeah. So in the house, usually listening to it. And is that yeah. your headphones or on the computer? Um, AirPods. I'm like an AirPod because you can see you can hide it behind your own hair. So, um, <laughs> I like, AirPods. I like that. Well, thank you for sharing. And the voice you just heard is the sound of today's guest and you will meet her in just a second. I would like to welcome you back to a mental health break. I am your host and author of the books Mental Health Week and Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Vincent A. Lancey. You could check out both of those books on Amazon after the show ends. If you are new to the show, each week I sit down with a mental health advocate or professional to share their story, and more importantly, their why relating to mental health advocacy. For me, it came from after I suffered a traumatic brain injury. Mental health became a lot more of a priority than it was in the past. And before I introduce this week's guest, I have some exciting news to share with you all. This summer's episodes will be brought to you by Tampa Counseling and Wellness dedicated to helping individuals looking to positively transform their lives through compassionate counseling and wellness coaching. If you struggle with depression, anxiety, or other mental health issues, call today for a free consultation. Tampa Counseling and Wellness, therapy that inspires change, and you can find their info in today's episode description, whether you want in-person visits or virtual assistance. I reconnected with today's guest up at my book release in New York, and I immediately learned all about her passion for mental health and knew how powerful her story would be on this show. I briefly touched on that she will share her journey battling postpartum, but also has advice and tips for all to think clearly. To all of the new moms out there, you are not by yourself. Get ready for a lot of value and a great story. Maddie, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Ben. I really appreciate it. And I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. Would you mind introducing yourself to our audience and sharing part of your story before we talk more about your mental health? Absolutely. Hi, guys. My name is Madison Wade. I'm a first time mom. And um, just a brief intro about me. Uh, so I started out on Wall Street and um, I moved to event planning. And while I was definitely looking for like my passion there um, along the way I became pregnant. And uh, while I thought maybe that would be my niche, um, becoming a mother, I soon learned it was not going to be very easy. So yeah, after learning about what you were going through, and I looked up for today's spotlight story, I learned a lot more about postpartum. I have some friends as well who are battling it. So your story is going to go a long way. Let's now talk about some of the mental health disparities you experienced due to this postpartum and maybe if there was anything before. Sure. So um, one of the things I quickly learned after having my daughter is uh, what they call the fourth trimester. Um, and it's something that like you could, whether it be like a, a blogger's term or something that's frequently written about in like, you know, new parenting books. Um, the fourth trimester is right after you have your child okay. and um, women's hormones are still regulating like heavily. So they consider it almost like you're, you're still having part of your pregnancy um, while you're given a new baby in hand. So that fourth trimester for me was something that I realized um, I had never done any reading about. Um, no one had really ever spoken to me about it, um, whether it be my OBGYN or any of like the health classes I had been in. So that being said, the only time I ever was asked about my mental health after I had delivered my daughter was once, and that was by my um, delivering doctor, my OB, who um, was a wonderful, wonderful doctor. But I have to say that was probably the one and only time. And I remember answering 
oh, I'm fine. Oh, I'm totally good. And this was probably like two months into what would become probably about an eight or nine month struggle with postpartum depression. So yeah. that's what started for me. And I didn't even realize at the time that that could have been my first step towards speaking to a professional about what I was going through. But as a new mom, this is kind of one of the reasons I connected with Vin. I felt very um, like a lack of resources and a bit misunderstood, even from stay hydrated, it'll help you with everything to you're not alone in this. So that's how it started out for me, just not understanding you went into this kind of blind, you would say, then all this just hit you without really expecting even the slightest bit. And I think a lot of women wow. go into pregnancy a bit blind, too, because I we're so. a, that like, OK, we're new moms. We're ready for this without realizing, you know, that that fourth that fourth trimester at the end. Um, it's It's a very unknown area. No pregnancy is the same. No postpartum is the same. It's mm -hmm. it's. You know, when women say like, oh, you're carrying like me. I always remember that sticking with me being like, how? Because yeah. like we're so, so it, it was weird and it was frustrating because I didn't understand. And my husband, too, like, mm -hmm. why wasn't I taking to this the way I thought I would? I can resonate in a different way with a traumatic brain injury. I had great doctors, great staffs who did inform me about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really sink in, A, because of how far back I was with the traumatic brain injury. And B, I didn't have people who actually went through it. Once I started connecting right. with more people who went through a TBI, and I'm sure it's the same with you, yeah. you connect on a whole different level and you understand things much more deeply. So I think your testimonial today can go a long way because as you mentioned, people don't even think about this when they're having a baby. They just think, baby, happy day, move on. Totally. And like, there's a lot of um, stigma in a positive way, because there are a lot of women that don't experience this and have their own, like tribulations in their own way of whether it be lack of sleep, but there's a big stigma around like, smile on your face. This is the new baby mom's doing great. So one of the things that I found, and that I look back on now is when my doctor asked me, how's your mental health doing? That would be a way for me down the line to check in with myself as well as check in with other moms just by saying, and how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, because then it, it, I felt like, wow, someone's finally asking about me or the mom. You're leading by example and you're doing things that moms all need. So it will go a <laughs> long way. You mentioned that this all started with the postpartum. But when was that moment where you started to speak out and share your story? Sure. So. Truthfully for me, um, I'm very fortunate. I have a great support system between my mother and my husband that they sat me down. Um, it was probably the summer of 2019. I had my daughter in the summer of 2018 and um, they sat me down and they were like, listen, we love you. We support you, but you're not loving and supporting yourself. So that's when things started to shift for me. I feel if it hadn't been for that huge support of the people that were closest to me, the people that were parenting with me. I don't know if I could have at that moment been able to face what I had been dealing with. At that point, I, you know, I sought out like professional help. I met with a psychiatrist and that's when I started to feel very proud about what I was doing. Like I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for my family. So I think it was the support of and professional, you know, care that really got me to the point where I could speak openly because I was at a place where I knew I was doing the right thing for myself and my family. You mentioned a lot of great things there, but being your best friend too is so important. It's something I talked about in my third book, Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health. You have to really be kind to yourself in order to truly be kind for, to anybody else to really care for their problems. You have to first address your own. And that's something that Dr. Denise, who, if you listen to my content or my books, she's been in all of that. She really got me thinking about that. It's true. You can't really expense energy on anything and give it a full effort if you're only helping yourself here and there. Oh, true. Especially with a newborn baby. Like I always could take care of my daughter. I could always, we were always at a park or a play group. And right. that was never, that was never the issue, but it was the things where then you're so right. Like, if you're not that friend to yourself, if you're not taking care of yourself, how do you pour from an empty cup, you know? 
you don't recognize it at first because there's so many other things going on in life. But as you get older and you mature slowly but surely in different ways, it becomes even more clear. I mean, even for me, once I put out the first book and I got the other foot from being outside, one foot in, one foot out with this entrepreneur thing, my whole life changed where I, I'm up at two, three every morning, committed six days a week. There's no time for distractions because if I can't take care of this, and if I ever try to go out, I'm always having this in the back of my mind. I can't really, really be there. So for now, just this career choice that I've made, this is the sacrifices I've made to keep myself happy, be kind to myself, because I still need time for the gym and to eat healthy and to do all of these things that I can't really make time for anything else right now. So you made a lot of great points. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being so willing to um, hearing my story as of well, course. because individual experience that um, I think uh, many new parents, both, you know, males and females can kind of do. It's a scary, scary time. Well, it's a topic that isn't obviously discussed enough. If there's so much unknown about what you've called the fourth trimester that I was unaware of beforehand, but now we're going to help the overall audience here, Maddie, if you could pick two short-term and long-term initiatives, anything you do on a daily basis or long-term basis that helps make you feel mentally okay. I'd like to ask mm -hmm. you to share that with our audience. Sure. So, um, and tell me if I'm off base at all. The short-term things, I would have to say that make me feel like, and just correct me if I'm wrong, that my mental health, like for my initiative, mm -hmm. my short-term things would be practicing gratitude every day. That's something when my feet hit the ground in the morning and at night, my little small practices is what is one thing that I did today that I want to do differently tomorrow? That really helps me, especially as a new mom who's just always like, oh, did I skip lunch? I should probably fix that tomorrow. And on long term, um, and I kind of mentioned this before, is always asking a new mother, how are you doing? So that's, that's a practice that for me, I feel those are the questions that really helps me. Well, you mentioned a lot of great things again. Practicing gratitude is very important. Once you really look at your surroundings, not the brand names, not the expensive items, but you, even when on your worst day, you look around, what are you grateful for? Like right now in Florida, it's raining. I have a house over my head. I've got food yeah. in the fridge, little things like that. And you'll start to see life in a whole new way. Self-reflection mm -hmm. is key. You grow a lot more if you just reflect and you improve on your weaknesses and then transition those weaknesses into possibly strengths. And everyone loves to ask how you're doing, even if someone smiles at you when you're having a horrible day in the grocery store, I think everyone can agree it goes a long way. But we're gonna transition now to your awareness for mental health, Maddie. You started to speak sure. out, share your story. I know you're an mm -hmm. ambitious woman. What do you have on the horizon? Um, so a big thing that I started like really, really putting my brain power into was thinking about um, motherhood on the resume. There's a bit of like a movement out there. It's MOTR and it's um, the group behind it is Hey Mama Co. And um, they're all about putting motherhood on the resume because there is a long gap where, you know, I haven't been working. And I feel that when I present myself, you know, my daughter will be going back to school soon. Um, but that's something that kind of speaks for itself as far as like defining the time that I wasn't working, but also kind of pinpoints the things that I'm good at, whether it be multitasking or like a, a sense Absolutely. of. So that's something that I'm kind of like gunning for. I'm like motherhood on the resume. I so. think that's a, a movement that would catch some traction because right now employers are very challenging to get jobs for. If you don't have that experience steady throughout and with entrepreneurship, that's where I started to run into that problem. But right now I don't need the resume. Who knows what the future story yeah. So I'm optimistic for what I have going on, but it's a great time to shift into the spotlight story here, Maddie. If you're new to the show, this is where I take the time to look at a celebrity or someone in the spotlight to share their mental health journey. And more importantly, let you know that you are not alone. Even though someone looks healthy from the outside, they may be the opposite on the inside. So right now we have the story of Sarah Michelle Geller. We all know her from Buffy, but I learned a lot from this article where around one in nine women experience postpartum. I think that's a pretty significant number, especially for the lack of awareness we've learned today. Geller experienced this after giving birth to her first daughter. The Buffy actress shared a post that offered a refreshingly 
honest reminder that all kinds of women may suffer from postpartum depression. Here's what it said. Having kids is a wonderful and life-changing and rarely what you're prepared for. She wrote this in an Instagram post along this a photo of her baby. I love my children more than anything in the world. But like a lot of women, I too struggled with postpartum depression after my first baby was born. She puts it as absolutely devastating and occurs when females are already in a vulnerable state, which is perhaps right after giving pregnancy. Some symptoms can include withdrawing from loved ones, feeling angry, crying more than normal, feeling guilty about not being a good mom, or doubting your ability to take care for your baby, even feeling numb or disconnected from your baby, worrying that you might even hurt the baby. These are a lot of powerful thoughts. Maddie, what are your takeaways? So I feel like I could have checked a box for each of those things that um, Sarah Michelle Geller elaborated on. And one of the things that you don't think of as symptoms that she listed for was crying more than normal, you don't think of that as a symptom. You're just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. Yep. Um, doubting your ability, where anyone who's a new parent might doubt their ability, but this is heavy doubting your ability. Like, what did I get myself into? And there's no going back, you know? It's not like you can return your baby. <laughs> um, and the feeling angry. I remember feeling angry if, like, you know, I made a wrong turn while I was driving. Small oh. things like that. So, so taking my biggest takeaway from this was seeing how clear her message was of how she loves her child so much. That being said, here are symptoms that went along with it. It's hard. It's a very, it's a total opposite ends of the spectrum. You wouldn't expect to happen at the same time. I can only imagine obviously and learn from people's stories who have the courage like you to come out, share their story like Geller. So when we were kids an actress there, came out and shared her story. So with that, Maddie, I really have to thank you so much for coming on again, having the courage to share your story, shedding light on issues such as the fourth trimester and motherhood and the resume. I think that's very important and thank you're leading by example. It can go a long way because there are a lot of mothers probably having some mental health challenges by feeling upset. Why aren't they getting these jobs? They are qualified. So what they had to take a year or two or three off. They've improved in all of these other areas. You're going to let them shed some light on that. But can you stop now for your last word? Sure. Um, I think the biggest thing that we can do for ourselves is love ourselves in order to love our children. And something that I say to my daughter every night and something that my husband and I say to her as well, after we say, I love you, daddy. I love you, mommy. We end with, I love myself. So that's something we're trying to teach our daughter from a young age because and she says it every night. So remember to love yourself. It's very important. It's very important that you're doing that. It's a different time of sending someone to school, even when we were in school and it wasn't too, too long ago. But with technology came like a whole new realm and parenting has mm -hmm. been taken to a new scale. So thank you for that. How can everybody find you? Say hello and see the future work you're doing for mental health and motherhood. Absolutely. Thank you. And please, please uh, search for me. I'm always open to speaking and meeting with new people. My Instagram handle is at Madison S. Wade. That's Madison S. Wade. M-A-D-I-S-O-N-S-W-A-D-E. Thank you guys so much. Thank you again for sharing your story. And while you were on social media, be sure to check us out too. We're at a mental health break on all major social media, except for Twitter podcasts by Lancey. So you have updates from all four shows. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancey for all social media and YouTube. And my website is vincentalancey.com. Be sure to check out my books, Mental Health Week and Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health. They are on Amazon now. And I would like to thank you for listening. And we will see you next week on a mental health break. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. Mwah.